Okay, so here I want to go over artificial lighting setup basics. It's really easy for growers to go out and buy a bunch of lights and then worry about setting them up. So you want to be thinking about your grow room or your grow space and look at it realistically and then buy lights that match that particular setup. So first off, planning your lighting system. Well, all lights generate some form of heat, so you should have an idea about how you're going to manage this. Basics should be taken into consideration our distance to your plants, uh, distance you're going to put those lights from your plants, and also distance from the ceiling, method of cooling, and capacity of the circuit. So you kind of have these competing ideas. If you want to light the area, but you have this heat to, to contend with. It kind of becomes this little chess match of how you're going to organize things, and you want to make sure it's organized ahead of time so you're not fumbling around with all these potentially very expensive lights with a, in a system that will not work. So distance from plants and distance from the ceiling. So depending on the stage of growth and type of light, uh, the recommended distance will change. For example, if you're using fluorescent lights, you're looking at about 3 to 6 inch distance between the plants and the lights. High pressure sodiums or your other high intensity lights, looking at 2 feet or greater. Also want to consider the distance from the ceiling as this has to do with the ability to cool the fixture. You can see in this grow facility here, there's a good distance to the ceiling allowing plenty of air circulation and ability to cool the area uh, very easily. The method of cooling that you choose, lights, good lights can generate heat, should also consider a method of cooling. It could be potentially passive, but usually assisted in some way. Uh, all serve the same purpose, but will depend on the basics of the growing space. So fan assisted is probably the most common. Uh, you can see here's a can filter. Uh, it's able to really circulate the air well and also uh, purify and clean the air um, while it's also circulating it. Also want to be thinking about the system capacity. It's very easy, I call it just to add lights, but be sure your system uh, can support the power requirements needed. Take the total circuit it can support, connect up to 80% of what can be supported by the stated value of that circuit. Even if everything on that circuit's not running at the same time, consider it the worst case scenario. Also, hopefully using a breaker box kind of system here, and not kind of the old knob and tube and fuses here. I'm going to upgrade to kind of a modern day um, electrical box here. Help reduce the chance of fire and allow you to spread things out much more effectively. The wire gauge, so the higher the number, the smaller the wire diameters. We see here 30 gauge, 29 gauge, 28 gauge, as we get to 10 gauge, much larger, 4 gauge, 2 gauge, 1 gauge. So it's a little counterintuitive. That larger number is that smaller wire gauge. 14 is often considered the standard. However, if you're doing a long run with high power consumption, 12 gauge uh, or lower wire would be recommended to reduce the chance of fire. Importance of a grounding plug. So we're looking at the example between this um, plug and this plug. The entire electrical system should have a grounding plug. If your outlets can only accept a two-prong electrical device, you are highly recommend to upgrade your system here to include a grounding plug. Uh, and these kind of would be the updated system and this would be the older system here. And both running at the same uh, voltage, but the grounding plug is much advised because of that ground that is present to help, again, make your system as safe as possible. Lastly, you want to make sure you're properly seating the bulb, so take care to ensure the system is off and unplugged, and take extra steps for good electrical connection, both with the ballast and also with the bulb connection. A lot of times you can see here that they'll fit in, but you want to make sure they're seated properly. also want to clean the bulb and the reflector before turning it on. Make sure everything checks out uh, before adding power and turning this on, so you have the safest and most efficient uh, way to light your plants.